Secretary General of the House of Representatives dated 13 April 2020, informing the Senate that there was an error in its transmittal letter dated 18 February 2020 regarding the composition of Oversight Committee on the Joint Congressional Power Commission. The name Representative Rodolfo, Rodolfo Albano must be read as Representative Antonio T. Albano. To the Committee on Rules. Bill on first reading, Senate number 1792, <coughs> entitled An Act Establishing Public Health and Environmental Standards and Safeguards for the Better Normal in the Workplace, Public Spaces, and Communities Toward a Sustainable Recovery from the Coronavirus Disease 19 COVID 19 Pandemic, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Communications, letter from the Office of the President of the Philippines transmitting to the Senate two original copies of the following Republic Acts which were signed by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Republic Act Number 11470 entitled An Act Creating and Establishing the National Academy of Sports and Providing Funds Therefore. Republic Act Number 11471 entitled An Act Creating a Barangay to be known as Barangay H2 in the city of Dasmariñas Province of Cavite. Republic Act Number 11472 entitled An Act Increasing the Bed Capacity of Caraga Na Regional Hospital in Barangay, Washington, Surigao City, Surigao del Norte from 150 to 500 beds and appropriate funds. Therefore, RA Number 11473, An Act Upgrading the Talisay District Hospital in Talisay City, Province of Cebu into a medical center to be known as the Cebu South Medical Center and appropriating funds. Therefore, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 7799. Public Act Number 11474, an act upgrading the Maria Eleazar District Hospital, the municipality of Tagkawayan, province of Quezon, into a level 3 general hospital to be known as the Maria L. Eleazar General Hospital under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health and appropriating funds, therefore. Public Act Number 11475, an act transferring the capital and seat of government of the province of Rizal from City of Pasig, Metro Manila, to the City of Antipolo, province of Rizal. Public Act Number 11476, an act institutionalizing good manners and right conduct and values education in the K-12 curriculum, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. Public Act Number 11477, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Golden Broadcast Professional Inc. under Republic Act Number 8025, entitled an act granting the Golden Broadcast Professional Inc. a franchise to construct, maintain, and operate a station for FM radio and television broadcasting the island of Mindanao and expanding its coverage to the entire Philippines. Public Act Number 11478, an act increasing the bed capacity of Lethal Medical Center from 500 beds to 1,000 beds, upgrading its service facilities and professional health care services, authorizing the increase of its medical workforce complement, amending for the purpose of Public Act Number 8053 and appropriating funds, therefore. Republic Act 11481, an act extending for another 25 years the franchise granted to First United Broadcast Corporation, presently known as Global Satellite Technology Services, Inc., Amending for the purpose, Republic Act Number 8079, as amended, entitled An Act Granting the First United Broadcasting Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain for commercial purposes radio and television broadcasting stations anywhere in the Philippines and for other purposes. And Republic Act Number 11482, entitled An Act Renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Broadcast Enterprises and Affiliated Media Inc. Under Republic Act Number 8098 to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines. To the archives. Letters from the Executive Secretary of the Office of the President respectfully transmitting to the Senate the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th reports of the President to the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee pursuant to Section 5 of Republic <coughs> Act No. 11469, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Heal As One Act. To the Committee on Finance. Letters from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas transmitting to the Senate copies of the following certified and authenticated BSP issuances in compliance with Section 15A of Republic Act No. 7653, the new Central Bank Act. Memorandum Numbers 2020 08 09 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54, dated 13, 14, 18, 19, 20, 24, 30, 31, March, 1, 6, 7, 8, 14, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, April, 1, 2, 4, 5, 15, 18, 29, May, 1, 5, 9, 15, 17, 18, 19, and 26, June, 2020. Advisory to Memorandum Number a-2020-21, dated April 8, 2020. Circular letter numbers, 20, CL 2020 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, dated 24, 27, 30 March, 7, 14, 23, 27 April, 10 May, 16, 17, 18, 
27-30 June 2020 and circular numbers 2020-1079, 1080, 1081, 1082, 1083, 1084, 1085, 1086, 1087, and 1088 dated 4, 9, 27, 31 March, 6, 22, 28, 29 April, 11, and 27 May 2020. To the Committee on Banks. Letter from the Government Service Insurance System dated 2 June 2020, submitting to the Senate the report on the GSIS investment portfolio as of December 31, 2019, in compliance with Section 36 of Republic, Republic Act Number 8291 or the GSIS Act of 1997. To the Committee on Government Corporations. Letter from Roy Selly D. E. By dated 23 June 2020, submitted to the Senate. The 2019 Annual Report of Digital Mobile Philippines, Inc. in compliance with Public Act Number 9180. To the Committee on Public Services. Letters from Enrico L. Espanol dated 23 June 2020, submitting to the Senate the 2019 Annual Reports of Smart Communications, Inc., Smart Broadband, Inc., and Prime World Digital System, Inc. in compliance with Republic Act Numbers 10926, 8337, and 8992, respectively. To the Committee on Public Services. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, just a simple reminder as well to our colleagues. Next week, as you mentioned earlier during the caucus, we will be instituting, uh, we will be adjourning every day, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. President, so that they should be present at 3 p.m. for roll call every day. Although we are on break on Monday, there's a, a holiday. We start on Tuesday then. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, move to recognize our distinguished lady senator from uh, Panay and the Republic of the Philippines to uh, avail of the privilege hour. May we recognize Senator Risa Ontiveros, Mr. President. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise on a point of personal and collective privilege. Nung isang araw po, nagulantang tayong lahat na sa gitna ng kinakaharap na pandemya, ay may twin bombings na yumanig sa bayan ng Holo, Sulu. 14 ang mga inosenteng na matay, habang 48 civilians at 27 na security personnel ang sugatan. While terrorist attacks, especially when there are deaths, are always galling, this one cuts particularly deep. This is because of fresh intelligence reports emerging that the female suicide bombers responsible for the blasts were two subjects of an army intelligence mission in June, a mission that ended in the killing of four army soldiers at the hands of the Holo police. This was stated by Lieutenant General Cirilito Sobejana himself, commanding general of the Philippine Army. As a senator, as a peace advocate, and as a Filipino, I want to know the definitive answers to the questions on everybody's mind. Ano ang kinalaman ng pagbomba ng holo noong August 24 sa pagpatay sa mga sundalo noong June 29? Many theories emerged during the CA hearing also on the same day. Elements of the Abu Sayyaf infiltrating the local police force, links to illegal drugs, Clan Wars or Rido. Ano ba ang totoo sa mga teoryang ito? Did our policemen put Holo and our nation at greater risk when they not only interfered with army intelligence operations, but they also killed our operatives? How many months and years of intelligence and counter-terrorism effort did we lose on June 29? I rise, Mr. President, because the bombing in Holo casts new light on the June 29 incident and raises the troubling questions I asked above. I have three points. First, Mr. President, I really believe we need to go deeper into the motivation for the killing of AFP personnel. Already before, but now, after the bombing, even more so. Anong dahilan kung bakit sila pinatay when all the records indubitably demonstrate that the policemen knew they were dealing with soldiers even from the first checkpoint? The PIDEA operation reports, monitoring and information system 
show that there was no coordination made by any PNP units in Sulu for an anti-illegal drug operation. But then, when asked to, asked to justify their actions, one claim the PNP Holo made was that Corporal Asula had drug connections and was identified in a drug matrix. Kung hinahabol si Corporal Asula at drugs ang angle, bakit hindi coordinated sa PIDEA? Or is it something else, Mr. President? Kasi noong CA hearing, during the questioning by the minority leader, Lieutenant General Corleto Vinluan admitted the possibility of a conspiracy between the terrorist bombers and the members of the police who shot them, saying, quote, Posible yon dahil magkakamag-anak naman sa Sulu, close quote. What lends this theory support is information I've received that on June 29, the soldiers found out that the bombers knew they were being tailed by the AFP. The soldiers had already been able to narrow down the possible lodging places of the terrorists and were actually closing in on them. I also have information that the soldiers trusted the PNP. Siyempre, Mr. President, magkakampi sila. In fact, gusto nga sana nila nagamitin ang quote, house-to-house -house tokhang with the help of the barangay officials and PNP para mahanap ang bahay kung saan umuupa ng kwarto ang mga bombers. Tapos ganito. Tapos papatayin sila. Hindi ng kalaban, ng tropa. Mr. President, we cannot turn away from this. The targets of the June 29 mission were two female bombers. Investigations into the August 24th bombing show that it was perpetrated by two female bombers. Diretsahang tanong, did terrorist elements somehow influence directly or indirectly the killing of the soldiers? Second, Mr. President, I want to talk about the integrity of evidence. Wag na po natin pag-usapan ng planting of evidence. The NBI has discussed that extensively when it stated that a gun may have been planted in the hand of Major Indamog to corroborate the theory of a gunfight. Pag-usapan po natin ang integrity of evidence, ang preservation of evidence, rather, ang pag-usapan po natin. According to the rules of the revised PNP operational procedures, specifically PNP SOP number ODIDM 2011-008, Conduct of Crime Scene Investigation, quote, immediately after an armed confrontation, the officer who is in charge of the operation shall secure the site of confrontation, close quote. This includes, Mr. President, the very basic rule that evidence shall not be removed from the crime scene unless it has been labeled, photographed, and documented. Pero why is it that messaging apps on the cell phone of the late Major Marvin Indamog appear to have a last seen time after the moment of his death? Why was custody of the personal effects of the dead soldiers not turned over to the military right away? These questions are important enough already in the aftermath of the deaths of our valiant soldiers and persistent accusations of cover-up and whitewashing. They are even more important now after the aftermath of a bloody terrorist attack. Kung ang tanong lang pagkatapos ng June 29 ay, quote, ano ang tinatago ng kapulisan at bakit parang may cover up, close quote. Ngayon, pagkatapos ng pagbomba sa hulo, ang tanong na ay, quote, mayroon bang military intelligence na napunta na sa kamay ng kalaban? Third and last point, Mr. President, with the killings of the military officers, and the subsequent terrorist attack killing 14, we need to ask, 
Where does the buck stop? Sapat na ba ang accountability sa level ng local na PNP? I note, Mr. President, that despite the overwhelming evidence demonstrating prior coordination between the PNP and the AFP, including a meeting on June 25 attended by the Holo Chief of Police, the PNP leadership continues to maintain that, and I quote, the incident is not murder or rub out as claimed by some quarters, but a legitimate police operation that resulted in an armed encounter, close quote. Ang sabi pa, quote, had there been proper coordination on the part of the AFP with the territorial police units in the AOR, the said incident could have been avoided, close quote. According to our sources, Mr. President, the PNP leadership knew that there was coordination. In fact, the leadership indubitably knew that PNP personnel were already apprised of the identities of the victims and their designation as military personnel when they were accosted at checkpoint 2. Alam ng PNP na alam ng mga local police sa checkpoint palang na military ang nakasakay sa Montero. Also, why is the PNP leadership saying that police officers cannot be suspended prior to a finding of guilt? It's patently false to suggest that suspension can only come after a guilty verdict because preventive suspension is an explicit mechanism under Republic Act No. 8551. It is also an explicit mechanism in the Internal Affairs Service or IAS manual. But more importantly, the need for preventive suspension of our police officers has taken an urgent turn in the light of the statement of Lieutenant General Vinluan that there may be a conspiracy between the police officers and the terrorists. Sabi ng head ng IAS, the police officers involved will, quote, perform duties as a policeman, but their movements will be restricted to ensure their presence in investigations, close quote. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng perform duties as a policeman? They will still have access to police intelligence. They can still participate in operations. In light of the statements of Lieutenant General Vinluan, I'm deeply concerned over the risks to our national security. We need more decisiveness from the PNP leadership. We need more remorse for the acts of their men, not justifications unsupported by the evidence. We need accountability and justice. Hindi na ito katarungan para lamang sa apat na military na pinatay. Katarungan na rin ito para sa 14 na mamamayan na napaslang at marami pang nasugatan sa bombing noong August 24th. Kaya hinihingi ko po, Mr. President, sa pamunuan ng PNP, relieve the entire Holo police force. Para matanggal ang agam-agam na may infiltration ng terorista, para mapanatag ang loob ng mga Pilipino, para bigyan ng free hand ang investigasyon, the entire Holo police force must be relieved. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we'd like to recognize Senator Franklin Delon. He's raising his hands, Mr. President. Senator Franklin Delon, recognize the minority leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Majority Leader. Will uh, the lady, the distinguished lady senator from Panay, yield the floor to a few clarificatory questions? Certainly, Mr. President, and to the good minority leader. Yes, uh, indeed, as mentioned by uh, your good self uh, during the uh, uh, hearing uh, in the, uh, I think, in, in, uh, in the commission appointment last Friday, I was the one who raised the concern about the lack of any substantive uh, progress uh, in the investigation of the killing of our four uh, soldiers. And to be honest, I was a little disappointed at the um, 
failure to, of General Vinluan to brief the committee of exactly what the status is. Remember, Mr. President, that in this particular case, there is obviously treachery. The soldiers were unar un unarmed. They were shot at the back. And uh, when we asked uh, General Vinluan, he said there is no motive. They could not attribute any motive, which raised doubts really uh, on, on, on in my in, in mind as to or strengthen our suspicion that there is there appears to be a collusion uh, between uh, the uh, the law uh, law police force personnel and uh, the uh, terrorist. But having said that. Um, why is it that up to this point, the uh, policemen have not been preventively suspended? Why? What's the reason? That's also the question in my mind, Mr. President and uh, good uh, minority leader. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in the hearing, uh, particularly on uh, the Holo killings, uh, the chief PNP said, that uh, what happens is that cases are filed, investigated, and if they are found guilty of the administrative charge, they can be suspended. But there is no such thing as suspension prior to any administrative proceedings. We cannot do that in the PNP, said the chief PNP. And further, Mr. President, uh, the Inspector General of the PNP's Internal Affairs Service, Attorney Alfegar Triambulo, then said they are still police, they will perform duties as a policeman, but their movement is restricted to ensure their presence uh, during investigations. Nanjan po sila. So, Mr. President, I certainly share the puzzlement and the concern of the good minority leader why a firmer action has not been taken even at this stage, two months after the killings and um, pending still uh, the prosecution and decision uh, on uh, a case in court vis-a-vis uh, -vis these police personnel charged uh, with very or, or recommended to be charged by the NBI with very uh, serious uh, crimes. And uh, the good minority leader, Mr. President, may agree with me that if there are allegations of conspiracy between the policemen and the terrorist elements or allegations as came out uh, through the questioning of the minority leader in the Commission on Appointments hearing, allegations that the police force has been infiltrated, then the fact that they are still performing their duties is really very disturbing, Mr. President. Yes, and considering, and you know, this is most unusual, given the magnitude of the case, the, the killings happened on June 29, that's two months, two months ago, and yes. at this point it is pending still with the prosecution service of the Department of Justice. And I suspect, having worked there, I suspect that the, the prosecutor, uh, uh, instead of dismissing the case, is giving uh, the uh, NBI an opportunity to build up the evidence. And indeed, that, uh, that, that is confirmed by the fact that two months after Hanggang ngayon po, eh, wala pang resolution. So I am really concerned here, you know, uh, this is already uh, the army uh, uh, personnel being victims. I cannot imagine if uh, there were civilians uh, who would be victims in this, of this dastardly act. All the shots, all the, all the shots, uh, uh, point of entry at the back. All the shots, uh, the, the police, the, the, the intelligence uh, personnel had no um, paraffin, um, passive paraffin test. So uh, they, they did not uh, fire a gun. And uh, I am really concerned if this can happen to our own uh, army personnel, how much more are they civilian? And now there is uh, a uh, recommendation that martial law should be declared. Ayan po ang ating problema because of, uh, you know, the, the, the people the people, people like us uh, who are supposed to examine the declaration are really left 
with no choice but you know to 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 consider seriously the uh, the, the plan for martial law because of the inadequacies that we see in the investigation of uh, this case but you know the most serious thing here is the alleged or the what in what uh, marks of collusion uh, mm -hmm. between the, the terrorist and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, uh, policemen uh, i've asked that question point blank at the major bin one and yes he did not discount it mm -hmm. he, he said, did not discount it mr president yes. yeah, that is why it. yes and uh, I, I uh, uh, well, when this privileged speech is referred to uh, some committee, so the appropriate committee, I assume we have to focus on this so that, uh, at the very least, we can uh, we can have some some uh, um, indication of, of of what to do next. But having said, and even Mr. President, while our investigations are continuing and while the families uh, of the four victims in the killings and then the families of the 14 and more victims in the bombings are waiting for justice, certainly the PNP is well within its powers, motu proprio to act more decisively vis-a-vis -vis their personnel. Uh, they could have already ordered the preventive suspension of the policemen under Chapter 9C, Number 1, of the IAS manual, which is preventive suspension of the respondent by the disciplinary authority and the IAS. And uh, lastly, Mr. President, another legal basis would be Section 71 of uh, RA 8551, which also authorizes an authorized superior to impose preventive suspension against a subordinate legal officer. So that's as clear, as unequivocal, Mr. President, as you can get. Yes. And therefore, uh, there should be a call on the part of the Senate to impose the preventive suspension on these uh, sus sus suspected uh, uh, perpetrators, uh, because we must remember that the PNP is a part of the civilian force in the government, and an ordinary and uh, civilian employees are are, are 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 subjected to preventive suspension in case of any offense committed. I cannot see how the PNP will justify the non. Uh, imposition of the preventive suspension when it is very clear that here uh, uh, it is justified. But having said that, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, having said that, uh, Mr. President, would the lady uh, senator give us an assessment of how the intelligence uh, apparatus is functioning, uh, given the fact that number one. Uh, there appears to be a, a leak in the in, in the uh, operations, and uh, the fact that up to now uh, no evidence has been gathered in so far as the motive is concerned. Uh, what's the what does this say about our intelligence um, uh, network in that part of the country? Mr. President, I have always had the highest respect for our intelligence units, whether of the Philippine National Police, which my late husband was an officer of, or the armed forces of the Philippines. So it was really a terrible tragedy that took place and really shocking, not just to civilians like us, but it appears to the Philippine Army and the whole armed forces of the Philippines as well, when that killing happened. And as I mentioned earlier, not at the hands of mga kalaban, pero at the hands of tropa. Uh, various uh, officers, even in the armed forces, have expressed that kakampi namin ang PNP. And that accounts really for their shock and, of course, their, their outrage that this should have uh, transpired at all. Um, with the story that we learned after the terrible killings that they were actually closing in on two suspected uh, suicide bombers should have culminated not in the killing of those operatives, but in the actual arrest of those suspected suicide bombers. And probably, this is the double tragedy, Mr. President, probably the prevention of the terrible uh, twin bombings in Holo uh, two days ago. So there are... Uh, 
there is a long tradition of excellence in the intelligence services of the two uh, institutions, which is so poorly served now by this recent incident. And therefore, uh, I think behooves all to explore the three uh, possible theories of motives that the good minority leader was able to draw out in the Commission on Appointments hearing, uh, the possible infiltration uh, of the local police force by the Abu Sayyaf, possible links between them and illegal drugs, or uh, the third theory of Rido uh, or, or family feud. Because it, it cannot simply be uh, uh, a misencounter or a bungled uh, operation. Things just don't uh, add up, Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> a, 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 a misencounter is uh, certainly... Uh not supported by evidence and I do hope that this theory is not, uh, uh, is not uh, insisted upon because uh, it is very clear that there is treachery, they were shot in the back, they were unarmed uh, and, 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 and so uh, there was, they, had, there was, there was, they were not even able to fire any gun, their, their, their arms were left in the vehicle. So in any case, uh, uh, Mr. President, we will um, uh, we'll, uh, congratulate the good senator for uh, bringing this once more uh, to the attention of the chamber because uh, it, sana po hindi makakalimutan ito. And again, the uh, failure to, to enforce the law, to implement the law, this is where we are having a problem because uh, uh, as I have always stated in the debates on the death penalty, it is not uh, whether or not a, uh, our statute would allow death penalty, but it is the uh, enforcement of the law. And here, unless we do something, and unless uh, more vigilance is uh, dedication uh, is uh, seen, you know, this, uh, this incident may go again uh, in the record as one of those uh, uh, unpunished, uh, <laughs> the perpetrators are unpunished and the failure of our justice system. So um, I will not, uh, as I, we said, uh, we do hope that uh, our the appropriate committee to whom the speech will be referred uh, will uh, be a, will, will immediately call this to a public hearing so that we can uh, discuss uh, these, these issues that we confront today. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And certainly we all hope that this and the killings as well of the 14 in the twin bombings will not go unpunished. I'd also like, Mr. President, to thank the good minority leader for his wise um, idea earlier that um, if the chamber sees fit or if the minority leader will propose it, that the Senate, in fact, call upon uh, the PNP national headquarters to, as they are actually empowered to do, already preventively suspend uh, the nine uh, suspected police personnel. And lastly, Mr. President, I hope also that through this speech and this interpolation that the PNP National Headquarters will hear um, my uh, suggestion and appeal that they relieve the whole complement of the HOLO uh, police force in order to make way for a full investigation that uh, enjoys the full confidence as well of the Filipino public. Salamat po, Mr. President. Mr. President, the uh, first to raise his hand after uh, our minority floor leader was Senator Bato De La Rosa, after which Senator Gordon, Mr. President. Yes, Senator Ronald De La Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I just would like to react to the speech of uh, the good uh, gentlewoman from uh, uh, Panay. Uh, uh, during the hearing on, on the public uh, public uh, order, we we even uh, number one we we encourage in BI to to establish the real motive of the shooting incident. And uh, number two, uh, it was explained by the Chief NB, being a lawyer himself, that uh, uh, 
wala daw sa power niya under the RA 551 yung pag uh, preventive suspension ng uh, mga pulis. Ang kanyang power lang daw was limited to uh, yung uh, preventive uh, custody para hindi daw makaalis yung mga pulis. But nevertheless, they were no longer performing uh, their duties dahil ang duty nila doon sa Sulo, dito naman sila ngayon sa Karami, uh, uh, naka-restrictive custody pala. Restrictive custody. So, hindi na sila nagkakandak ng duty. But uh, sa akin lang naman is uh, the, the, the good uh, senator was uh, there at the hearing and uh, you have uh, asked exhaustively Uh, lahat ng uh, tanong na pwede natin itanong but uh, sa akin lang isa you know if we insist on that theory na merong uh, uh, eh, hindi ako ah, hindi ako hindi ako nagdidepensa sa pulis if we insist on that theory na talagang may sabwatan yung pulis doon at saka uh, yung Abu Sayyaf uh, hindi natin establish yan doon sa hearing. Ha? But uh, ako, it, it would add, uh, uh, it will rub more salt to the injury dahil nga, sabi ng mga pulis doon, kami nga nagpulis dahil ayaw namin yung ginagawa ng Abu Sayyaf. Tapos ngayon, you, 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 we, if we insist on uh, uh, working on the theory na sila ay kakutsaba sa Abu Sayyaf, doon sa ground, it will demoralize the local police. Unless, Unless sana mayroon magkakaroon tayo ng uh, magandang siguradong ebidensya na i-accuse natin sila na ganun, uh, maganda sana. But uh, pag ganun na uh, hindi natin establish sa hearing, din ngayon, hindi na mayroon kakutsabahan yung polis doon at saka yung Abu Sayyaf. Al alam mo, being a policeman, pag ako marinig ko yan sa baba, uh, ma-demoralize yung kapulisan yan pag uh, ganun. Ako lang, that's just, that is just my comment. Personal comment ko lang yan, uh, Mr. President. Mr. Thank President, you. thank you for the comment uh, of the good gentleman. Um, truly, in the hearing, uh, dun sa kanilang komite on uh, uh, public safety and dangerous drugs, uh, hindi na-establish uh, yung ganung theory. Ang disturbing ay walang na-establish na theory tungkol sa motive nung pagpatay. Kaya po sa pagtatapos nung hearing, ang uh, sense ko talaga ay meron ng mas nabuong mga piyesa nung puzzle, pero hindi pa kompleto. May na-identify po tayo during the hearing na ilang sino ang kasama sa kwento, kung ano yung nangyari, siyempre yung, wa, yung when, yung where, yung how, pero yung why. Siguro yung pinaka-importanting tanong sa ganyang kaso ay hindi. At yun ay mas, well, isinabi na ni General Vinluan, yung teorya ng possible uh, conspiracy dun sa hearing na iyon. At lumabas muli sa Commission on Appointments. Yung infiltration by Abu Sayyaf, yung links sa drugs, illegal drugs, at yung RIDO. At kaya muling o, o kailangan pa rin itanong ngayon in the light of yung twin bombings sa Holosulu. Uh, yung theory mismo na yon ay galing kay General uh, Vinluan. Kaya, kaya sabi ko kanina, uh, obligado tayo na ipursue pa rin siya at tignan kung merong bang laman. Dahil palagay ko rin po bilang byuda ng PNP, mas nakaka-demoralize sa karamihan ng mga PNP na tapat na gumagawa ng kanilang tungkulin kung maiiwan yung ganyang bahid na hindi klarong natatanggal. Kung mayroong mga may sala, importante na matukoy at madisiplina sila ayon sa batas at hindi sa habang panahon maiwan sa buong national police yung ganyang klasing duda. And... Bilang uh, law enforcers, laging bumabalik sa batas. Uh, unfortunately, uh, nandito ta talaga sa, um, sa IAS manual uh, mismo at sa Republic Act 8551, mismo yung terminong preventive suspension at sa IAS manual din. So, hindi po ito uh, unreasonable na hingiin sa PNP National Headquarters well within yung kapangyarihan 
uh, niya na i-exercise ito ngayon at posibleng uh, nagawa na rin uh, ng uh, good gentleman nung sila rin ay uh, chief PNP uh, noon, uh, Mr. President. Any uh, other comment, uh, Senator De La Rosa? Otherwise, we will recognize Senator Gordon. Senator Richard Gordon is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President and uh, our distinguished colleagues. It's, it's very disturbing, Mr. President, not just because law enforcement have been killed, but we are in the Senate to be able to make known our perceptions and to represent the people in their sadness at the failure of law enforcement to even solve a case between our enforcement agencies like uh, the army uh, and the police. Of course, the police is the enforcement agency and the army uh, who was the, who were victimized here uh, certainly are supposed to protect our country from external and internal enemies. I am disturbed by what Senator Dillon said that, uh, ano, hanggang dito na lang tayo. That's another one of those things that will go into the record. That is why I commend the gentle lady from Panay uh, for raising it and for doggedly being determined uh, to find closure uh, into instances like this. I think most of you know where I stand uh, on many issues such as you know, killings uh, done by uh, riding in tandem, or murders. I've always stood up uh, when there were dastardly crimes uh, that have been committed, uh, even during my first term. So my question is, uh, is that all we can do? The suggestion of the gentle lady is to uh, uh, relieve the entire police command of uh, Holo. Uh, is that all that can be done by our country or by our government? Is that a suggestion? Mr. President, uh, the good gentleman from Zambales is right. That is certainly not the only thing our country can or should do. But it is a first step, Mr. President. It is a first categorical step to uh, relieving or suspending, suspending from duty the whole police force uh, in that city, some of whose uh, personnel are now under suspicion for the commission of very serious crimes. Uh, crimes against the four uh, army officers and personnel, but because of the uh, succeeding events, must now continue to be investigated also together with the investigation of these twin uh, terrorist attacks also. Uh, in Holotown. If the PNP National Headquarters, in fact, relieves the whole Holo police force for the pendency of the investigation, I believe, Mr. President, that it will clear the way for a full, more unfettered investigation. Mas magkakaroon ng confianza ang publiko na yung ganyang klasing investigation nga ang isinasagawa para hindi mangyari yung sinabi ng minority leader at yung kinatatakutan ng gentleman from Sambales na baka mauwi sa wala yung uh, pagresolba at pagbibigay ng closure uh, sa kasong ito. At kung gawin ng PNP National Headquarters yung pag-relieve uh, ng holo police force habang iniimbestiga yung naunang pagpatay at ngayon itong twin uh, bombings, mas mauungkat pati yung napaka-problemadong anggulong iyon, yung teorya na posibleng may infiltration na ng Abu Sayyaf, yung local police force na iyan, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, I ask that question because it seems that we are all exasperated. I am exasperated. Uh, and that's why I continue to stand up. And I will remind you that uh, about a few weeks ago, I stood up when that... Uh, the director of the uh, uh, National Mental Hospital was assassinated and said, we cannot allow this to happen all the time. Again, this is riding in tandem, and I've been proposing 
solutions such as a, a larger plate number and then naman back and forth pero again yung mga kalaban niya na may negosyo ayo na kaya but today i'm happy to announce na mukhang na solve na and tama yung theory ko na yun talagang uh, medyo na punish siya o natanggal niyang uh, administrative uh, officer doon ang behind uh, the assassination but i'm no stranger to the situation what you just said uh, rings deep into my heart uh, digs deep into my heart after three attempts on my father's life did he relieve yung police chief nung una uh, yung second pinalitan uli yung police chief and finally the third one they relieved the whole police force on the final assassination that's only the time of president marcos even before martial law and that's why it has scarred me for life that uh, anytime an injustice like that happens and nothing is happened nothing is done i will stand up and try to contribute whatever i can contribute to make sure that justice is done uh mr president we have a police force that has a budget of 800 million in intelligence funds it's the biggest even if you put it all together with the against the whole uh, AFP, Mr. President, uh, Philippine Army has 444 million, the Air Force has 17 million, the Navy has 39 million, the Coast Guard has 10 million, the NICA has uh, 219 million. The budget of the PNP is almost uh, bigger, if not equal, to the whole armed forces of our country, among other things, among other agencies. Of course, the budget of the president is 2.5 billion. Why am I saying that? You know, if there is indeed uh, the matter of infiltration or the matter that uh, some people have gone dirty and have uh, in the police force, then that must be pursued and those people must be excised. And if we do have a police force worth its uniform, respect for its uniform, they must self excise uh, the malady, the problem. Otherwise, it stays there. Don't you think that the impact on our country is terrible? Uh, law enforcement and our military, our military in particular, are killed, practically assassinated one by one, you know, a lot of my encounter. And yet, it happened in June 29, hanggang ngayon, there is no action whatsoever that's what i find abhorrent don't you think it's really abhorrent mr uh, mr president certainly mr president and that abhorrence ay uh, nare-reinforce lang tuwing naalala yung pinaalala din ni good gentleman from sambales uh, that this is not the first time that uh, certainly not the first time that violence has been inflicted in our society at matagal talaga Makamit yung katarungan. I wish to express, Mr. President, my congratulations to the good gentleman from Sambales for the role uh, that he certainly played in raising the attention about the case uh, of the NCMH official, which today we read in the newspapers has finally borne fruit in a concrete step forward to achieving justice for him and his family. And I always appreciate whenever the good gentleman um, speaks from his own uh, personal pain, even at the cost of pain, even at the cost of scratching that scar which has formed over the trauma of the killing of his father in order to speak um, proactively and seeking concrete action on further cases uh, of violence. And truly, uh, Mr. President, uh, it would not be acceptable to us as Filipino citizens and as legislators to see either of our main uniformed institutions, whether the armed forces of the Philippines or the Philippine National Police, to be laboring under unresolved cases like this. In this particular case, the one in the hot seat is the PNP. And all of us who work in government, we know full well na ang kahit anong modernong estado na magiging uh, maayos yung good governance niya, kailangan umasa din sa yung pangarap ng PNP law na magkaroon tayo ng isang Philippine National Police, a police institution, national in scope, civilian in character, modern and rules-based. So, kontra-kontra sa ganyang pangarap natin ng 
para sa PNP yung sitwasyon kung nasa saan siya ngayon in this part in these particular cases Mr. President Mr. President when I was in the uh, in the constitutional convention way back in 1971 I opposed the nationalization of the police force simply because it deprives the citizen of a choice now if one uh, if the PNP uh, is, infe is, is infected in one area they can hide within the recesses and the dark corners of the, a big organization. Di ka tulad ng araw, pag nagluko lang yung lubaw, lubaw police or olongga po police, alam mo kagad yun ang pupuntirin mo na dapat uh, malutas. And uh, I was in favor of having a national police force and a local police force. And so that at least the citizen will be protected uh, to a certain extent. Uh, now, uh, Mr. President, uh, itong situation na ito uh, is unacceptable because parehong mga protectors ng bayan yan. And to me, what pains uh, every citizen is, or what perplexes them, is bakit ang tagal? Bakit wala nangyayari? Bakit kailangan umakit pa dito sa hearing? Bakit why doesn't the, the system heal itself? And why do we hide under the system now? I cannot preventably suspend or anything like that. I don't mind that, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. I don't mind telling you that when I was mayor, and I was not going to be a marshal, I said to the national policemen, I have visit you, I have a visitor here. I have a I have moral authority here. And I have been known to lock a policeman of course, arbitrarily, ito kung sila ay nalampal ng tao, nanakit, i-anunsyo ko ba sa radyo, at makita nyo, bisitahin nyo yung polis, nakakulong talaga. And after about, sabi nga, but they volunteered to go to jail. And they did volunteer to go to jail. Otherwise, sabi ko, I will file case against you until you remove. The people want instantaneous justice. Kung hindi makukuha yan, it's just like a, an infection in our body. Hindi natin mapagkatiwalaan. I'm glad that na-solve yung kaso. Hindi pa naman solve. Uh, dadaan pa sa korte yan. Pero at least, mukhang nagkaroon ng konting closure doon. Pero ang daming namamatay na ibang tao. Uh, at uh, eh, lalo na ito, kung ang ating mga enforcement officers ang siyang nagpapatayan, eh, talagang may insecure ang tao. And so, nung nag-file ako ng bill last time, uh, tungkol dyan, Ang sabi ko, naglagay ko ng declaration of policy na ang mga police dapat i-uphold palagi ang dignidad ng bawat mamayang Pilipino, a human person, and guarantee full respect for human rights. Dahil uh, kahit anong sama, dapat meron pa ground rules because if you break the rights of some other people, you begin to go into a slippery slope where eventually anything is possible. I also said in that law we should prosecute rogue police elements through a special court that will provide the public fair, impartial, and speedy disposition of complaints for violations of one, constitutional rights, two, PNP operational procedures, and three, code of ethical standards committed by the members of the PNP. In other words, I was trying to free the PNP from the Kabaro system. Kabaro natin yan eh, huwag natin pahamak. Tama po ba yan? yung uh, kabaro system it exists di ba whether we like it or not it probably exists in uh, almost any human organization uh, mr president but certainly the pnp ay isa sa mga institusyon na pinaka ayaw natin na yun yung mamayani dahil gusto natin professional organization siya at uh, maaasahan ng mamamayan as the good gentleman was saying and in any instances na sila mismo mga PNP personnel ang lumabag sa batas that yes, there will be redress of grievances for the citizen, Mr. President. Mr. President, I will refile that bill uh, again and I hope we can put it in the front burner in this back burner. But let me put it this way. In another country called the democracy, the United States, the mother of the demo modern democracy, a person by the name of George Floyd, who was suspected of having fentanyl, who was suspected of having uh, 
counterfeit money. Of course, later on it was found out it was not counterfeit money, but in the in the autopsy later on, it was found out that he had fentanyl and other drugs, um, uh, shabu in in his in, in his body, and yet the whole country was rocked by the instantaneous demonstration of that picture where that policeman, that uh, American policeman from Minnesota, uh, was kneeling down on the neck of this black man. And he was pleading with him and saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. That uh, created a massive uh, outpouring that uh, of the movement that uh, about for the black man or for the mm. people. Black of Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. I, I, I don't like that. But I think all lives matter. Like you say, the people who were killed in that bombing, you know, there are limitations in what I can say sometimes because I'm in the Red Cross. I don't want to uh, imperil my volunteers on the ground because we're going to take sides in the conflict. Uh, because we minister to all. We visit prisons. We visit even members of the Abu Sayyaf and uh, bring their families to visit them. That's part of the of the rules of of a modern civilization that uh, even wars have uh, rules and there are exceptions, you know, uh, that uh, must be followed. But in this particular case, the longer this case drags on, the lower the esteem of the people uh, goes down in favor of their government. So I ask this question. No, I, don't, I had to go to the president of the Philippines. Brad Kuyan. And then, sabi ko, why hasn't my father's cases been solved? And that's why, sabi ko, mother ko, tinanggal yung buong police force. But later on, it is really not a government of laws, but of men, kinomute. Kaya sabi ko, use this in death penalty, kayang i-commute, lalong masasaktan ang tao, pagka nakakayanan na isang tao malaki, na i-commute yung death sentence, di mabuti pa, mabulok na lang sila sa preso. Para sa ganun, talaga may punishment at makikita ang may justisya. So what I'm trying to say here, I guess, Mr. President, is that uh, kailangan the whole Senate must show its umbrage. Kailangan na, uh, yun ang umbrage, uh, we will not take it. We will not, uh, and, and we should hold everybody accountable from the President to the Chief PNP. Because bakit kailangan pumunta sa Presidente para magkaroon ng katarungan? Or for that matter, bakit kailangan tayo mag-privileged speech? Kailangan mag-privileged speech kayo para magkaroon ng katarungan. Or ako, kailangan mag-privileged speech para mapansin yung National Mental Hospital Director na uh, Pinas lang. And I've done that for other people. In other words, our country must have a regime where the law will work, where the wheels of justice will turn without having to be pushed, without having to be demonstrated against. Uh, because in this particular instance, ang lumalabas sa akin, baka natatakot ang bayan natin, ang mga leader natin, na pakialaman niya dahil baka makasama di umano na pagbintangan natin yung mga kapatid natin, polis, doon sa hulo, dahil iba ang kanilang uh, sinasamba, pero pareho naman ang Diyos natin, at lalo makapagdala uh, ng sigalutan. But the law must be brave, Mr. President, no matter who it is. I mean, you have an American, Pemberton, who is in jail here. The law did not look at his color or the status of his country. He's in jail. Even if he's in jail in Camp Aguinaldo or whatever, wherever he is now. As far as I'm concerned, that part, <coughs> for justice to be attained, the citizen doesn't have to go on a very circuitous route, spend an awful lot of time and resources to go to the highest person of the land, to go to his senator or congressman, to get justice. That is the point that I'm trying to raise here. It is the duty of every policeman to abide by that. And that's why he must. And this Senate has acted many times. Yung pinatay dyan sa Kaloocan na bata. Kian De Los Santos. Yung tayo dyan, sila Senator Luxon, sila Senator Zubiri. Yung hazing, umaksyon tayo dyan. Pero ang Senate is really composed of people who want to make laws that will reinforce and establish the strength of a democracy. 
and not to emphasize the weakness of our democracy. You know, para bang, para si Patrick Henry to quote, they tell us, sir, that we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable a problem like this. Ikalaman natin, aayusin yan, Mr. President. So, beyond the speeches, beyond the usual investigation, ako, I'm sure you can accuse me of many things right now because the report I sent out last night, and nagpahalam ako kay Senate President at saka sa inyo lahat, na I would, I would come out with the report. It's called the Chairman's Report. The report is now being circulated because I wanted to be able to prove na may umaaksyon tayo na dapat mababasa na mapilitan lahat tayo magbasa at tingnan kung tama o hindi. Kung hindi tama, tanggap ko na sabihin hindi. Kung tanggap naman ninyo, maganda, lalabas, mapanusahan yan. Ganito rin yan ang hinihingi ninyo. Hinihingi ninyo na beyond, uh, bakit dadaan pa sa Senado? Ginagawa ng Chief PNP. Anong ginagawa ng Regional Commander? Dapat right away, ikaw ang police chief dyan. Magbigay ka ng investigasyon. Kung hindi ka dapat dapat dyan, tatanggalin ko ang lahat ng police na involved dyan. Yan ang pwedeng gawin nila dyan. Or for that matter, if you will recall, the chief PNP was investigated by this representation and by the Senate. And hindi tayo tumigil. So he had to retire quietly. Although I did not agree with that, I thought he should have been prosecuted and that is my recommendation. And yet, yung nagsisinungaling ay nakakulong doon sa Muntinlupa. Hanggang sa ngayon, because Senator Soto, Senator Dillon, Senator Lacson, Senator Gordon, and the rest of the committee said, kung hanggang nagsisinungaling ka, hindi ka uubra sa batas, lalo na sa Senado. And that is what people want from us. That we must make the law work. We must make the rule of law work. And what is the rule of law? It must be predictable. Na pag may gumawa ng kasalanan, predictable na mauhuli at may mangyayari doon sa tao yan. It must be consistent. Hindi porke may kabaro, magbabago. It must be continuous na talagang sustainable. And above all, meron kang pupuntahan na west or justicia na magpupuntahan mo na hindi ka na kailangan pumunta sa presidente o kanino man na gagalaw bag isa lalakad ang katarungan para talaga ang bansa natin ay tunay na government. At people, saka Mr. President. People, and by the people. Yes, Mr. President. At isa pa, isa pang paraan na hindi kailangan eh halos buong bansa ay kikilos bago yung institusyon mismo ay kikilos is even in this matter of my call to the uh, PNP National Headquarters to relieve or suspend the uh, the uh, entire Holo police force, to relieve the entire Holo police force. Uh, you know, Mr. President, it is also within the powers of the chief PNP to relieve uh, errant subordinate police officers. In fact, the current chief PNP has relieved police officers for even lesser issues. For example, Mr. President, uh, just in January, he uh, relieved three senior Central Visayas PNP officers for playing golf during duty. Now, okay, that, that is that an infraction, but certainly... Itong... The military was uh, told by the president of, the, yes. uh, of Korea, no more playing golf. And, um, then, and, and, uh -huh. and, in this, and in this example, Mr. President, the chief PNP relieved some of his people for, uh, for a similar offense which pales in comparison dun sa charges against there were three police, 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 police personnel yes that were disciplined so, by the chief pnp yes. for while under isolation so isa pa po yun, mr president and again and then again wala yun sa kalingkingan nitong very serious charges malayo against malayo, mr president malayo, malayo. Malayong malayo po. At hindi ko naman pong sinasabing sibakin na sila o tanggalin na sila. They could even be placed on rotation. And but, and this is precisely so that charges of conspiracy and infiltration can be investigated thoroughly to the satisfaction of not just the PNP itself at hindi lang yung AFP pero yung buong mamamayan, Mr. President. Kaya nga po, uh, tapat, tapat, tapat sa buko, I just wanted to emphasize that. That the law must be allowed to correct the list of this country. Parang barko na naglilist. Kailangan i-write mo on even keel. 
para may tiwala ang tao sa kapitan at saka ng tutulong-tulong yung mga tao na paanda rin yung barko ng maayos kahit na nasisira. Sabahit kung di gagawin, eh talagang tatamaan tayo ng gusto. And so, Mr. President, I wish I could prolong this discussion because it is to my liking that uh, uh, we highlight the fact that uh, there can be something done, especially by the Senate. Uh, but really, we need to let the public know that we care. We care. Uh, and we cannot have people who are treated like sacred cows na beyond the law. Kaya nga, impunity is the rule of the game now. Pera nga ng bayan dun sa, sa, sa ating PhilHealth. Talagang kung, kung kalusin eh, grabe. Talagang tinatanggal lahat at ginagawa lahat. Impunity, nagpapalabas ng malaswa. Binabastos ang kababaihan. Doon sa mismong opisina, bulwagan at magsisinungaling pa rito. Hindi naman raw nakahubad. Eh numakita ngayon yan, di tahimik sila. Ganyan na eh, impunity. Yung binabaril yung tao sa kalye, uh, naka-motorcycle o yung mga uh, pagkamalang droga, babarilin. Who, who, who speaks for them? I remind the Senate and I will stop that. We, the Senate of this country, the Senate of the people, speak for them. And for that, I congratulate you today because you spoke for the people again today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Risa, can I make a manifestation? Mr. Senator President, Senator Villar. Yes, yeah, Senator Villar, Mr. President, would like to be recognized. All right, uh, Senator recognized. Mr. President, Senator Risa, Dr. Roland Cortez, the is the was the director of the National Mental Hospital. He used to be the director of the Las Piñas General Hospital. Okay. When he was killed, I wrote a general anu of the ILG in behalf of the family for justice for the killing of uh, Dr. Roland Cortez. In fairness to General Anyo, who is also managing PNP, uh, after two days, uh, they said that they have a suspect. And today, they announced that they have filed cases sa suspect na pumatay kay Dr. Roland Cortez. So there are good points also of the PNP. And I'm very thankful to them in behalf of the family of Dr. Roland Cortez. So my good points, I guess we have to be more aggressive in, in uh, following up with regards to these issues. So uh, in fairness to the PNP here in NCR, they did a good job with regards to the killing of Dr. Cortez. Marami pong salamat. Salamat, Mr. President, and condolences kay Senator Cynthia for your loss also pala uh, dun kay Dr. Cortez. And congratulations din po sa uh, papel na ginampanan ninyo to help bring justice closer uh, to his family. Sana dito rin po sa kasong ito, hindi pa kailangan intayin ng PNP national leadership na instructionan sila ni Secretary Anyo bilang DILG Secretary. Pero gamitin na nila yung mga kapangyarihan na nasa sa kanilang uh, mga kamay ayon sa batas at sarili nilang mga manuals. Salamat uh, to the good lady from uh, Las Piñas. Salamat Mr. President. Yes, to General Anyo, pag sumulat ka sa kanya, ginagawa niya ng paraan. So I don't think it holds for all the PNP in the Philippines. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, may just one query, one question on uh, the issue on uh, Dr. Cortez. Uh, hindi ko lang na vinig when I, they were discussing it with uh, Senator Villar. Ma'am Ma Senator Villar, na huli na may na huli na ba silang suspect or? Uh, hindi pa nila na huli pero pinail na nila ng kaso yung yung kanyang administrative officer ang. Uh, ah, so na alam na yung mastermind. Yes, yeah, the mastermind. mastermind. Kasi nagfile siya ng case against the administrative officer. And ah, if, if, a... if that should be a basis for killing somebody, I don't know. But uh, yun ang pinayla ng case, yung administrative officers with other uh, uh, employees of the National Mental Health Hospital. Oh, that's good to hear, Mr. President. I hope that uh, they get into the bottom. This is po yung taong yan. Uh, Mr. President, with that, we thank the Lady Senator from Panay, Senator Risa Ontiveros, for 
uh, that a very important privileged speech, uh, in, in, impactful, especially the issue on the Sulu bombings and the, the uh, scalawags in the PNP there. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we uh, refer the speech of the lady senator to the Committee on um, Public Order and Security, uh, which is already hearing the same uh, privileged speech of Senator Batol de la Rosa on the same uh, uh, topic, Mr. President. I so move. Uh, hearing no objection, the um, privileged speech is hereby uh, referred. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, well, that is all for today. Uh, just a reminder again to our colleagues that uh, we start on Tuesday next week and uh, we have a few uh, major measures, major bills to be discussed uh, then. And um, uh, we are going to adjourn uh, each day thereof, uh, Mr. President. So with that, uh, Mr. President, that uh, Monday, August 31 is a regular holiday pursuant to Proclamation 84.5. This date being the National Heroes Day. Uh, I move that we adjourn the session until three o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, September 1, 2020. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? <clears throat> Chair hears none. The session is adjourned until three o'clock in the afternoon of September 1, Tuesday, September 1, 2020. Thank you very much, Bye, Mr. Guys. President. Have a happy weekend. Happy weekend. Bye, guys. Well, love it.